We welcome Professor Derek Abbott in the studio. He's uh, a professor of electrical engineering at the University of Adelaide. Welcome, Derek. Good uh, evening. I, know, I had students of yours in when they were working on a computer solution to the, the great uh, code mystery of Talman should uh, with the Somerton uh, body on the beach case. Uh, are they any closer? Oh, uh, they're doing some very interesting things, yes. Uh, but a different set of students this year. How does a professor of electrical engineering um, pay tribute to Ambrose Bierce, the American wit and uh, journalist and writer, who, whose Devil's Dictionary was published in uh, 1911, 100 years ago? Well, electrical engineers are, aren't heathens. They can uh, branch out into other things. Um, I guess uh, uh, being a lecturer, you have to have a sense of humour when, mm -hmm. when you lecture to an audience. And yes. so uh, you, you're, you're interested in, uh, in the writings of various wits. And, mm. uh, and uh, it just seemed to me that, uh, you know, this was written in 1911, mm. the Ambrose Bierce book, and yes. it was time for an update. And what better than 2011, exactly mm. the centennial? His death was just disappearing in Chihuahua. Yes, Probably I'd murdered. I have no idea. Probably. He had no reason to, to disappear himself, did he? Because he mm. loved the spotlight. Yes. He was a funny man. Yes. A, a great wit, um, almost of the order of Oscar Wilde. And his Devil's Dictionary defined things, didn't it? That's right. And it's not, as you, you're at pains to point out, it's not a book of quotations, although there are many quotations in it, aren't there? That's right. And your book is The Wicked Dictionary, which is a bit sort of Wikipedia uh, too, isn't it? Uh, it's intended to be a, a play on that word mm. uh, because I invite the readers to uh, submit uh, their own... Um, uh, uh, Aphorisms. Uh, aphorisms uh, or uh, definitions, rather. And you have contributed, um, as has, an, I don't know this man, Rick Byron? Uh, yes, he's an American comedian. He's right. done a few good ones. Yes, he has. And you've used Ambrose Bierce quite a bit. You've used the occasional Mark Twain, the, uh, quite a bit of Oscar Wilde, of course, quite a bit of George Bernard Shaw, uh, the great uh, Groucho Marx. Um, when he says, I think it's one of the great comments of the last century, that military intelligence is a contradiction in terms, and we see that almost on a daily basis, don't we, <laughs> unfortunately, Professor? Right. But I had never, and I'm a bit of a Marxophile, and I have never Marxist in, in the terms of, uh, you know, that there was a graffiti, um, je suis Marxist, tendance Groucho, I think in the 70s in a French toilet. Yes. Um, the, he said, and I've no, never read this before, military justice is to justice what military music is to music. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it is beautiful. And uh, you also, a, a, a few Kurt Vonnegut's, because Kurt Vonnegut loved, a, 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 admired Ambrose Bierce. Right. And he was a funny man, Vonnegut, too. Very wasn't funny, he? yes. And I'm pleased that Leo Roston, author of uh, many, many books, now largely forgotten, an American humorist. Uh, I particularly love his Joys of Yiddish. I, I wish it was still in print. George Carlin. Oh, yes, he's wonderful. Yes. Um, who redefined comedy, didn't he, Carlin? And famously published that list of words that you couldn't say. That's right. And then yes. proceeded to say them. He was amazing. Rick Bayon, just wandering through the book. Do you have any favourites? Um, oh, I, I love um, one of Ambrose's ones, uh, his definition of the corporation. Yes. Um, he says a corporation is an ingenious device for obtaining individual profit without individual responsibility. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> or an accountant, a dutiful book balancer whose role within a corporation is to protect it from creative ideas, That's said beautiful. the aforementioned yes. Rick Byron. Mm. Uh, uh, another thing that I realised when putting these all together is that um, you can go back to Voltaire and even yes. the Greeks, yes. and they came up with some Ambrose Bierce-isms almost. Uh, uh, like another favourite of mine is uh, from Aesop. Mm. Uh, he's uh, about a thief. It mm. says, petty thief is one you hang, 
but a truly great thief is one you appoint to public office. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that completely timeless? <laughs> it is. <laughs> or, or we'll say of advertising, the, the rattling of a stick inside a swill bucket. Yeah. I'd ne- I hadn't heard that before. And, of course, it's very fashionable to be an atheist these days, but you've defined uh, an agnostic as one whose ex- extreme scepticism even keeps them from being an atheist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, yes. Uh, the, the, the idea of these, of course, is to uh, be slightly twisted uh, in our definitions and um, Hmm. To, to make us think as well uh, as well as for the humour. Yes, and it is a true aphorism. Um, and so, some really challenge you. you re- and there's one or two coming up that I, 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 thought, I really have to think about that. Uh, they're a bit sort of uh, zen. For example, black holes are where God divided by zero, said Stephen Wright, who is a comedian, I think, isn't he? I think so, yes. Yeah. Black holes are where God divided by zero. So There are a few thrown in there for geeks. And, uh, yes, I suppose <laughs> that's nothing, isn't it? That's a but geek But it's one. also something. Uh, cause zero is a, a fascinating concept. The famous Bro- Dorothy Parker, Brevity, the Soul of Lingerie. That's a wonderful one, yes. <laughs> you must have a... Uh, your, your students uh, must be glad of you in lectures, I think. Um, also, there's some in here that don't have any attribution at all, and uh, I'm interested in readers yes. if they can actually trace who really said them yes. first and yes. and write in. Uh, like uh, there's a cute one, um, vegetarian, yes. an old tribal word for bad hunter. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but it's a wonderful one. And there's um, quite quite a lot where I've just put unknown underneath. Yes. Yes, quite. Um, so those um, people out there who are good at investigating these things, I'd like to hear from you. Conservatives, there, there are certain uh, uh, politicians, uh, conservatives, uh, other uh, categories uh, have a lot of entries. And there are many definitions of, of a conservative, for example, one who admires radicals centuries after they're dead. Yes, that's a beautiful one. <laughs> Remind me who said that? Roston. Leo oh, Roston, that was Roston, again, yes, the yes. aforementioned. Um, <laughs> and do you collect them? How, do you just write them down? Yes, yeah. I just write them on my iPhone when I'm in airports and things like that. As you think of them or you read them? Uh, yes, mm. I, I just note them down. The uh, and Mencken, H.L. Mencken, is again a great... Uh, a wellspring of wit, one of the great Absolutely writers, brilliant. again a journalist, mm. and revered and feared in <laughs> his, his time. I've forgotten, was it something Louis? Oh, his name? Yes. Uh, was it her? Could, uh, yes, Louis was his middle name. Yes. I can't her, remember his Herbert? first name, Henry no, or something. Something like that. Yes. He said, um, a cynic, a man who when he smells the flowers looks around for a coffin... And that's true. Another of his that's one of my favourites is Conscience, the inner voice that warns us that somebody may be looking. <laughs> <laughs> and this is new, um, many of which I love, a cult film, a movie seen about 50 times by about that many people. <laughs> it sounds like a Rick Bayan, is, is that is. right? Yes. It is indeed Rick Bayan. This is the one that, that has... Sort of uh, re- resonated through my my dull brain. Um, think, what does this mean? Is Jean Paul Sartre eat to appropriate by destruction? Now that's very interesting, isn't it, Professor? Because we generally are destroying something when we eat it, aren't we? Correct. Yes. We're claiming it, yes. and it's generally dead or dying when we're eating it, mm-hmm. uh, except for. Flapping fish, in, or they're dying in <laughs> vagina. Um, but but we're also yes, it, it, destroying in order to build, aren't we? Yes, it's an extraordinary. Well, uh, uh, well, that's that's the idea behind the philosophical idea behind a lot of these quotes um, is that is that there's also always um, a tension between opposites, between things. 
and this is something that's always fascinated me why I think I got into this is that uh, you know like somebody could see somebody as being angry whereas another person would say no that's mm. indignant yes. or, or somebody's got ego yes. and the other one person might say self-esteem mm. and so destruction and creation are also these opposites in tension mm -hmm. and and a lot of these uh, witticisms bring out those opposites and make you think about the other side of the coin mm. Rick Bayan again he's starring tonight freedom what the US frequently exports to developing nations by force if necessary <laughs> ain't that the truth yes and also that the Sufi adage Freedom is the absence of choice, which is a great sadness, really, isn't mm. it? And it comes to, is it Chris Christopherson in Me and Bobby McGee, you know, freedom is another word for nothing left to lose. Mm. Uh, you might gain freedom, but you've also lost other choices, haven't you? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. If you look at it that way. There's always the other side of the coin, isn't there? Mm. And Vonnegut, uh, humour, a way of holding off how awful life can be. And he also said that humour is an almost physiological response to fear. And that's very interesting, isn't mm. it? To fight fear, to laugh physically at what we fear yes. is a wonderful and very powerful thing. Yes. Mm. Mm. You must be fun at a dinner party, Derek. Uh, not really. <laughs> you trot out all these... Uh, are you a London-born... That's right, yes. And with an interesting life, you seem to be surrounded by celebrity. Weren't you living next door to Cat Stevens' drummer or something? Oh, once, yes. What was he like? Uh, he was he was fine. His Did name Cat he, come? His name was Jerry. No, I never saw Cat. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, who else? Because you were in Holland Park, very fashionable. Uh, you, uh, some of the Roxy uh, music uh, musicians were along. What brought you to Australia? Uh, I found the weather there very depressing and I needed mm. to change, mm. basically. And why electrical engineering? Why did I get into electrical engineering? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think when I, I was at the end of my high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. And it really was just by one of those twists and turns in, mm. in life that I got into it accidentally. In, now, of course, we're in the age of the computer, when you started, computers were much bigger, Derek. That's true. And now we're, they're on us all the time. Mm. Did, did we ever imagine that? Did you imagine that when you saw 2001, for example? Uh, that's that's a good point, yes. Um, I remember, <coughs> yes, I, I didn't imagine uh, that it would come this far. That's true. Mm. Uh, 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 just a funny story, I remember... Uh, in 1995, when I was printing my PhD thesis mm. <laughs> uh, in the laser printer at the time, uh, it couldn't handle it. There wasn't enough memory. And there was one diagram that just overloaded the, all the memory in the whole department. No. And, uh, <coughs> and, huh. and you had to kind of print uh, chapter by chapter very mm. uh, slowly. Mm. And and now that uh, um, amount of memory I blew in the whole of uh, the d electrical engineering yeah. department in the University of Adelaide, uh, everyone's carrying a, probably a million times more that on their iPhone. Mm. Uh, it's incredible right. how far we've gone. Well, at Flinders in the 70s, we'd use photocopies that were the size of Volkswagens. You know, and you had to... Yeah, page by page by page. I mm. suppose not, that's still the same. They're just much smaller, and they have. Mind you, they're annoying now. You just put something on a photocopier and press print. Yes. And it did it. Now you've got to, I don't know, have swipe cards, and then they themselves are computers. And has it gone too far? Um. Yes. Uh, uh, there's. You wonder about technology, whether you become entrapped by it all. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. The, um, H.G. Wells said moral, indiga moral indignation was jealousy with a halo. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a quote about censorship here, that it's um, people deciding, people reading or looking at things that, and deciding that they can read them but you can't. Mm. That's what sort of thing. That, that's eternal, isn't it? That's right. And you also cite to Jonathan Lynn and Anthony Jay, because, yes, Prime Minister's coming here as a play with one of oh, those... Oh, I have to go and see that. Yes, with one of those very... No, 
I'll read it. No, it is, the definition of no is, it is recommended that we set up an interdepartmental committee with fairly broad terms of reference so that at the end of the day we would be in a position to think through all the implica- implications and take a decision based on long-term considerations rather than rush prematurely into a precipitate and precipitate and possibly ill-conceived action that might well have unforeseen circumstances. Isn't, no. it, isn't that the best of yes, Minister? It is indeed, <laughs> and of, of bureaucracy. They'd love that. Ah, oh, dear. So, see what you think of this one. Mm. A fundamentalist in the US, one who is vehemently opposed to the suggestion of any hereditary descendants from an ape and yet behaves like one in matters of foreign policy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. God put the fossils around us, you know, Derek, to confuse us. That's right. There's one in there like that. And your quote here, pornography, the truest form of pornography is the depiction of beauty in war. Mm. Mm. And that's that's very chilling, isn't it? Very chilling, yes. Uh, Horrible, in fact. Uh, Puritanism, said Mencken, the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, here, here's a topical one for you. Emissions uh-huh. trading. A pollution control scheme that is rather like allowing a criminal to buy his way out of jail based on finding one honest person in the world to apparently reduce the overall crime for footprint <laughs> <laughs> and this I'm going to appropriate this and work it into my act I can use this I didn't know that Roosevelt as in FDR had said defined a radical as a man with both feet planted firmly in the air <laughs> and I love that because yes. uh, in a way uh, that's the story of my life a saint, says, said Beers, is a dead sinner, revised and edited. Yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> you must have, uh, uh, I suppose if you're teaching electrical engineering, this is something of, uh, something of light relief, is it, Derek? Uh, yes. I've also um, uh, asked uh, readers to contribute as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I've, I've got a few um, already contributed yes, by the sure. public. Um, This is from um, one of my ex-students. He came up with this beautiful one, uh, Motivation. Mm -hmm. Uh, The point reached by individuals when they have put off everything else, including procrastination. (laughs) 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 Is when you put (laughs) that last bit of motivation. You're quite right. Uh, David from uh, Mitchum says, If only closed minds came with closed mouths. Mm. Yes, because it's that's sort of the empty vessel makes as mu- uh, the most noise. I'm pleased to see Voltaire comes in, and there's something very similar to it too. Uh, probably ripped off Voltaire that uh, things that are too stupid to be said are sung. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's in there. Yes, it is. Thank goodness. Uh, and do you have family here, Derek? Uh, yes, I do. Mm. And, they all moved out. Why? Oh, we just love it here. Oh, I see. They moved. I thought you meant they moved out of home. <laughs> no, no, they, they came to Mo- it. moved out of their yes. prior home. And you, you enjoy the University of Adelaide? Oh, very much. Yes, mm. um, having a lot of fun there. Yes. Will you move on, or you're here now, and and, and so you'll stay? Uh, yes, I'll I'll stay here in Adelaide. Mm. For sure. And you're able to. I imagine I've been here over 25 years now. Yes. So. Imagine the world of, Part of the woodwork. academe, you're able to uh, publish now more easily and, and promulgate ideas more easily uh, thanks to the, to the interweb, aren't you? Uh, yes, the internet has made uh, things uh, very accessible these days, mm. indeed. I've enjoyed this book enormously, Derek, and I thank you for it. And uh, if people would like to contribute, because no doubt you'll have another edition, hmm. uh, where, how do they find you? Do you uh, oh, they can, can either us? Google my name or yes. Google the word Wicked Dictionary. Yes, and they one will, word, Wicked Dictionary. Yes, and they can um, um, email me, uh, find the email address, email me and make a contribution. So Google... And um, it will go appear in the next edition. Uh, with your name, um, Professor Derek Abbott, and you can look him up uh, uh, as
as he says on Google and his uh, wiki entry. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Good it's to see you again. It's been a pleasure. Thank All you. All the best. And it's, uh, thanks for giving us wry humour. <laughs> thank you. Uh, in the spirit of Om- Om- Ambrose Bearson, wouldn't he be pleased uh, a century later that he is remembered and saluted?